we talk about what to do after these situations. There always winds up being the gun debate. Tell me, in your estimation, what law would have made this situation not happen? What could have made this not a situation where this man was able to get weapons? Well, first of all, uh, Florida doesn't regulate assault weapons or 50 caliber, caliber rifles or large capacity ammunition magazines. It doesn't require a permit to purchase a gun. It doesn't require any registration whatsoever. Um, it doesn't require gun owners to be licensed, and it doesn't require a permit uh, to carry a shotgun or a rifle. It doesn't even require a background check prior to the transfer of a firearm between, uh, you know, non-federally licensed parties. Now, you know, that, that's a lot of nuts. And, you know, I believe strongly that common sense gun safety reform across our country uh, would make a difference. We know the gunman used a weapon of war to shoot down, you know, at least 50 innocent Americans. And, you know, we won't even uh, be able to get the Congress to uh, prevent terrorists or people on the no-fly list from buying guns. Uh, this, this is just, uh, well, you know, totally incomprehensible, Chris. And I think, you know, we've got to uh, get back to, you know, common sense gun safety reform. And we can't fall into the trap that is set up by the gun lobby that says, if you can't stop every shooting and every incident, you should not try to stop any. We did have an assault weapons ban uh, for 10 years, and I think it should be reinstated. What I'm saying is that when we get into the laws, there's so many laws already, and it always seems like it's more about the politics and the practicality of change, especially in light of what the Supreme Court decided in 2008, that you have an individual right. Now, you have uh, circled around this issue, and it's becoming more important, Secretary. So let me ask you, do you believe that there is an individual right to bear arms, as the Heller case decided in 2008? That's a very important building block for what kind of change is possible. Well, I think you have to read the entire decision. I believe law-abiding, responsible Americans have a right to own guns, but I also believe with the vast majority of Americans, there are common sense, constitutionally permissible steps we can take to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and terrorists while respecting the Second Amendment. That's, that is what Justice Scalia said in Heller. Um, now, I have you know, right. disagreed with some of the ways the court has applied that principle, like overturning the District of Columbia's safe storage law to prevent toddlers from accessing guns. There have been more than 23 shootings by a toddler this year alone. So we have to sort through the decision. Yes, there's an in, there is a right for law-abiding, responsible Americans to own guns. And yes, there are reasonable, common-sense measures 